because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. Hello and welcome to Raw, the Fight Within podcast with myself, Coog and Cassius. This week I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by my long-term friend, Mr Peter Fury. Peter, thank you very much for agreeing to come on this podcast. How are you, mate? Oh, I'm good. Not too bad. Life treating you well? Oh, I can always be better, Coog, can I? You know? But uh, yeah, it's all right. Every day, different day, different day, isn't it? Um, appreciate your hospitality. I've, I do feel like we're in a different country here <laughs> from what I'm used to, but yeah, it's yeah, nice. It's peaceful, listen to the birds and stuff. Very relaxing. Okay. Now, <coughs> I'm not, um, or I haven't given you any kind of context of this. I thought this was better to keep this as like a, a blank slate rather than you overthink. Always, yeah, I'm not an overthinker anyway. You know, I say probably too much as, as it is. So. You crack on, Coogan, whatever it is. Okay. I'm going to start you off really easy and, uh, and simple. What were your first, like, ever memories of boxing? Uh, probably with uh, my father and uh, my mother and father and my brothers. And my father would uh, listen to the fights on the radio. And uh, he'd, he'd be telling us about his, uh, his uncles and stuff about boxing, so... That'll be my first memories of it, yeah. Do you remember the first ever <coughs> fight you went to? I never went to see any fights. Um, you know, we were travellers up and down in trailers, so, you know, I never went to see any fights. And maybe when I got a little bit older, when we were going to leisure, leisure centres and stuff and local boxing gyms, then I used to go and uh, see a few fights there in the amateurs and stuff. But as a kid, you didn't kind of go and watch, like, whatever was the equivalent... I'm not going to go... I'd watch it on the TV yeah. when, it, when it come on, you know, in the 80s and see all the fights, probably about 11, 12. But no, life wasn't, uh, life wasn't all about boxing when I was uh, young kids growing up. We had other things, <laughs> many, other, uh, many other things uh, of interest, but there was always boxing around, yeah. Mm. It's mad because I think people kind of just associate your family from like... Boxing and that's it, but you're right, it wouldn't have just been boxing back then. No, not at all, you know, other things to do, thinking about getting money for one and uh, getting your living. Um, there was no school. We went to school, I think I left when I was eight. So I went to school and learned how to colour some books. So cause I wasn't interested in any of it, to be honest. You left school at eight, yeah? I left school at eight, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, that's it. I was, went with my mother and father, you know, we went out with them and... Uh, yeah, they put me to work as a, as a young age and, uh, you know, let me out to respond and uh, deal with people. Whose choice was that then for you to be not at school after the uh, age of eight? I think that's how Travellers was back then, you know, uh, with different cultures. And, uh, you know, my father always said, this, there's no point keeping them in school because schools ain't going to pay the bills, you know, it's not going to keep them. You know, the, you know we are travellers, you know, so... We take them out and uh, learn them how to learn them the ropes and learn them how to uh, get a living. So that's what we was uh, programmed to do, really. Mm. Um, was there? That's, any... not ju- that's not just me. That's that'll yeah. be all uh, our culture, travelling communities everywhere at that time. Mm. Was there anyone specifically for you, like fighter-wise, that you took notice of first? Who was the first person? I'm not going to say like an inspiration as such, but just someone that who was prominent uh, when you uh, were either involved in boxing or watched boxing that took note. Like I always say for me, the person that got me into boxing, watching it, was Princess Ian Hamid. But was there anyone for yourself that kind of... Yeah, when I was a little boy, my father always highly rated him, was uh, Ali, you know. So I liked everything about him, watching his fights and stuff. Um, And the way my father used to watch him and speak about him and stuff. So, yeah, probably... I, I rated him as uh, the best at the time, as a young lad, anyway. Yeah. I wouldn't say the best of the best, but I, you know, I've got uh, good memories of him growing up as a young kid watching him fight. Mm. Well, it's different because boxing is obviously an individual sport. Well, to a certain degree, 
there's always one person or one fighter that would have kind of got someone into even watching the sport. And I think Ali, for a lot of people, that would have been the case. Probably, yeah. But when I was a young lad growing up, it was Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler. There was a, a good uh, mix of fighters, Duran. There was all uh, them type of fighters. And we did used to watch them all. Mm. Um, right, this next one, I'm very curious to know the answer to this, actually. I don't know if you can answer it. Um, <laughs> do you ever think, or can you think, if you were not in the, the boxing industry or that but hadn't been a part of your life, which is quite like impossible to say, obviously, now, but if it hadn't been, what you'd be doing now? Um, what would I be doing now? I don't know, similar to what I am doing. You know, there's, there's, there's businesses and all that, isn't there? So, families and everything else. So, ultimately, I'm a family man, so I'd be doing that, wouldn't I? Mm. But, I mean, like, profession-wise... Well, I certainly wouldn't be spearheading and being an astronaut and <laughs> driving a rocket, would I? With <laughs> zero education or anything, so... <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe I'd be doing, I don't know, doing the garden or something. I don't know what I'd be doing. So it's hard to say. I'd be doing something. <clears throat> something. I mm. just wanted to be left alone, I should assume. Are you that kind of person? Yeah, I'm a pretty private person. I don't really... Uh, Socialise with that many people. Just keep myself to myself. Hmm. Do you remember, as a child, like the first ever, like not a way, not to do anything to do with boxing, but do you remember the first ever altercation you ever got into as a kid, or a fight of any note that you got into? I had many as a young kid. I was always up fighting up and down, and black eyes and whatnot. Was there a first one that you remember? I don't remember. Oh. In schools, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> On a daily occurrence, I think. So, just that, yeah, listen, young kids growing up. I never really had any problems uh, with other travelling communities and stuff. I never really got any problems with that. And, uh, but it was when I went to school. That's what I remember as a young kid, getting into skirmishes. Uh, you know, they bear in mind I left when I was eight, so... Couldn't have been that serious, could it? No. But I just sure. uh, remember I never got on with anybody in the school. So. Was that then or was that you? I don't know. You're just a gypsy, aren't you? You just entered in as a gypsy and I was a little fat kid. So you can imagine I'd get stick, you know, so that's how it was. Difficult? I wouldn't say so. Just a normal kid, you know. Listen, difficult makes people, makes men. Difficult rides make men. Easy rides make fools. So I had a good bringing up. Good bringing up. The harder the bringing up, the better it is. So, do you um, still think that now? I do. Yeah, I'm grateful for all the mishaps because it's made me into the person I am today. So, yeah, silver spoon in my mouth. What would I be? Well, you don't choose what you brought into, I suppose, are you? So, no. Listen, it's all about people, uh, where you're from, and the chances you get, and the things you've got to do to survive. You know, it's all right to uh, <clears throat> anybody saying who sat in an armchair was a privileged life and, you know, and parents have been lucky to provide for them and that's not a bad thing, that's the best thing in the world, but there's a lot of kids out there that ain't got that. Peter, do you remember a, a point in your life, whenever that was, where you felt as though you were fighting a losing battle? Oh, many times. Many times I've fought losing battles, uh, Authorities present, so uh, <clears throat> yeah, you fight losing battles when you lose your freedom, don't you? Is that, in answer to that question, is that a point that you'd think when you was in prison that was your part of your life that you felt that you were? Yeah, listen, you got nothing when you're in prison. You're stripped of everything. You're stripped of life, and you, you see, you uh, cause prisons are very good education because it's a wake up because you see who who is who around you, you see who the false people are, you see all, you see a lot of stuff and you see the ones that's really there for you and, and love you and care about you and you know, and that's what, uh, well anybody sensible, you take stock of that and realise that you know, there's plenty of people out there but they're not what they seem because when the shit hits a fan, they all run for heels, don't they? Yeah, I think that's... Uh... And I've had it, yeah. you listen. Like I said, I was a <coughs> pretty prominent person when I was younger. 
you know, with with a lot of things, and uh, maybe there was a lot of people around me at the time. Uh, but when the, when the shit hit the van, there was me, my wife, and me little kids. Well, little kids was baby, so me and missus. That was it. Is it a shame that it takes a situation like that for you to kind of see those situations in people? Because that doesn't happen to everyone. Normally, we, don't, we wouldn't find out, would you? No, but how lucky we are, how lucky I am, because I ain't got a lot of imposters around me, have I? So then people who've got all these people around them, they don't know what they're really like when they're in trouble. It's society today, isn't it? You know, they'll, they'll point the finger and uh, turn the back. So that's what it is. Are they wrong for doing that? Probably not. It's up to them, isn't it? But, and there is good people out there. It's not everybody. I was just uh, one of them people. Mm. That when I had a problem, everybody vanished. Also took a few liberties while I was inside. You know, so you see all these type of things. But all, self, uh, all self-created. all self If I hadn't been doing the things I was doing, you wouldn't have been seeing this. So what really is the answer? It just gives you a good education on life and what life is. Do you still have the same mentality of back then as you do after you come out? No, my mentality's totally changed. You know, when I was doing prison and I come out, I went, right, every day I've done, everybody's going to pay double. I'm going to get out and I'll be 30 times worse. You know, if there was an argument or if there was a fight to take place, I'd be first there. You know, I trained every single day and I thought, right, when I get out, I'm going to do damage everywhere. <laughs> that was my mentality that's back then. That's how you were. That's, that's, how how I was, that's how I was programmed. You know, people's done me damage and I'll see to it when I get out. But at the end... Uh, but that was the wrong way altogether. So, and uh, yeah, that was uh, not the right right frame of mind. So does prison work? It probably works because it gives you an understanding. And uh, looking back now, it works. But looking back at it back then, it probably didn't work for somebody like me. So that was your attitude when he was in there, when you came out. When did that kind of revert back to kind of any kind of normality for you? Uh, my family saved me life, really. I've got to say that. If it hadn't have been for me, missus, and the little kids, and I've always had like I must, I must be, a, must be a good person inside. I must have a good nature, because you know, I started looking at what, what it was doing to the family, and you know, and her talking to me regular pulled me around. If it hadn't have been for her, I'd have been either dead or, you know, doing a lifetime in prison. We've spoken about this before, obviously a lot, a lot of it off camera, but you, you've made great or put great emphasis on on that part, your family, your wife, etc., cetera, um, mm. being very pivotal in kind of how you... Listen, I don't want to condone any crime. It's not a, it's not a movie. When you're in it, it's no movie. It's fucking hell. Uh, and at the end of the day, that's, that's the role we was in. And I do know everybody. I know everybody. And people know me when I was in there. And we, you know, even we speak today and stuff. But, you know, you know, when a lot of people I know from back then, they've moved on with their lives as well. So it's uh, it's one of them things, but you know it's not uh, crime's no good. Crime's no good to anybody. It's definitely not. What are the everyday battles for Peter Fury away from anything to do with boxing? What are the everyday battles when you wake up? Everyday battles. Oh, I just sit and look at the wall sometimes, and you think, "What's this life about? It's ending. It's ending soon." <laughs> you know, but I can look from one extreme to the other. I can see I can see a big hole in the floor where I'm going to go inside of it, and and the dirt going on top of it. And I'm thinking, well, that's where I'm going. Well, what was the point in doing anything in the middle? You know, uh, one extreme to the other. You know, so when do you have those days then? I can have them days whenever I, I can wake up at the wrong side of the bed, and uh, sometimes it is. But I think as the more experience you get, you just um, you know you take stock and look look at the family and stuff. I never look at material things. I look at uh, my family, my kids, and uh, and that's it, you know. I'm not by myself. I've got people who care about me, so that's my main wealth, is that. Could and some... that, that, puts me, that puts me back in a, puts me back in a steady mood. <laughs> Have you got yeah. trigger points, that things that could set you off to be <clears throat> in that kind of mode? How do you mean trigger points? Well, tri- a trigger point, like that something could happen that affects your day and then that reverts you back to kind of thinking what you were just talking about there? I think there's all stresses in life. There's stresses with everything you do in business or, you know, whether it be paying bills or whatever, you know, it's, just, it's life, isn't it? We've all got uh, 
we've all got pressures. Mm. It's how you deal with them. You've just got to wake up and deal with them every day. There's no smooth ride is there, with anything. And I'm not a retired man, so of course there's uh, stresses and pressures no matter what you're doing. Not Every day is not an happy life, is it? you just got to get on with it. I always look at life like uh, the sea. you got a dead calm one minute, and the next minute you got a force eight, and big waves coming everywhere, and the ship's going like a cork in the sea. That's it. That's my mind, I think. So what's like the answer to that? To try and find a, a medium, a happy medium? Yeah, it is. You've got to find a, you've got to find a place, haven't you? But um, if I start looking at disappointments in my life and some, some, the way some people shape up or start looking at all that, that's all negative shit that I'm not interested. I don't look at life like that. I mean, you just sort of got to move forward and uh, do your best. And look, if you're on a down patch or there's a downturn, nothing lasts forever. There's always, as they say, light at the end of the tunnel. So you may feel shit one day or even a week, but it ain't going to last so don't beat yourself up about it. Just get on with it. And that's exactly what you do. I get on with it, yeah. Who's well? Who's gonna uh, Who's gonna sort me out if I don't get on with it? Well, yourself or, or no one. Exactly. You got it to do, haven't you? Would you call yourself an emotional person? Well, I define emotional like what? When's the last time you cried? Uh, when I've lost my family. Hmm. So in situations... When I've lost my family and lost my freedom. Um, situations like that, yeah. I wouldn't say I'm an over-emotional man, no. I don't, I don't cry over a film or if I haven't got a biscuit or something. Some people cry for nothing. But I'm not the type of fella. I don't know, I've gone through a lot of hardship, so it takes a lot for me. But listen, I'm a people's person, so if anybody gets hurt or or badly done as my family, that's going to affect me for sure. Mm. But I mean, a a away from that, obviously, that those situations you were talking about, you don't come across or haven't come across as highly emotional. And I think, yeah, it's difficult to tell though, isn't it? Obviously how people are, are kind of away from kind of any kind of work environment or whatever, if they are that way. But yeah, you don't come across as that way. Well, there's not a lot you can do. Look, we all get down times and we all get good times. There's middle times, whatever it is. But you just got to get on with it. It's life, isn't it? Once you know that and accept it, jumping up and down isn't going to do anything. You just got to... best thing is just take time for yourself and just uh, plough your way through, isn't it? I think I do kind of know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you. Do you, have you had to fight demons in your life? Are you still fighting them now? What do you call demons, like? Demons? Well, in the sense of... What, like, from your past, you mean? From your past, or it could be something that relates to now, I don't know. Like, I can't, I can't, look, the past is the past. You know, I'm a convicted criminal, we understand. You know, I've done a lot of bad things in my life. And only God will judge me at the end of the day. And wherever I'm going, I'm going. If I'm going to hell, I'll accept it. And if I'm going up there, upstairs, I'll accept it. I'm in God's hands. And that's it. So I've, all, I've done things wrong in my life, and so has a lot of other people. So everybody's got their own cross to bear, haven't they? And I've got mine, but I can live with mine. I know the type of man I am, and so I'm, I'm comfortable in my own skin, to be honest with you. That's it. What's for, listen, here's public knowledge with me. Yeah? Worst man on the planet, whatever you want to call it. I don't, I don't care. I'm not the man anymore. So you grow up, you get wiser, and you, you, you know, it's all about your family, isn't it? Keeping out of trouble and steering your kids the best way you can to keep out of trouble. You know, look, I can say none of my kids, I've got uh, six kids, and none of them's in any trouble. They haven't got no criminal uh, uh, ambitions or whatever. So it's, it's worked in that regard. Because nobody, wa who wants to be locked up? Who wants to spend years behind bars in captivity and all this uh, rubbish? It's not a brave thing to do, is it? A sensible man keeps out of trouble. As my old man would say, look ahead, son, if there's a, if there's a car crash up there, don't run into it, take a left before you, get, before you get there. So that's the correct way of going on. But listen, we're not all Einsteins, you know, we're not all perfect, so... <laughs> I've had plenty of car crashes, don't worry about that. 
Do you still think you get judged on your past? Well, I'm happy for people to judge and do what they want. They can judge me and they can do what they want, but the only person who's going to judge me at the end of the day is the blessed Lord, and that's who I give me life with. And I don't really, I'm not really too fussed what anybody says, you know. It is what it is. Take me as what it is. If you want to go on me past, do that. If you don't want to, if you don't want to listen to what I've got to say, that's fine. I mean, I'm very easy with it, to be honest with you. I'm certainly not going to let another person's opinion rule what I'm going to do mm. in my everyday life. And that's it. Because you are known in your kind of public persona as someone who doesn't hold back, won't kind of shy away from saying things that other people may not say, but you're known for that. And that's, well, that's how I've known you. All them years I've known you. Because there's a lot of false people, aren't they? You know, or they're not false people, I say, and they're in prominent positions and they can't really say what they think because if they say what they think, they'll lose that position. They could lose a livelihood, they could lose this, so people get shutted up, don't they? But because of my faith, and I have to speak out about my faith here and what it stands for, I have to speak out. Because when I'm in that box under that ground, you know, you're going to be answerable. So I'll say what I believe in, and that's it. I'll say what I believe in, no matter what. I'd say it to 20 people with guns facing me, I'd say it anyway. So I'm going to say what I believe in. My faith is more stronger than myself, so that's what I see. My faith has set me free, to be honest with you. My faith has got me out of trouble. It's it saved me life in every regard, so I'll put that first before anybody. I saw a quote the other day, I can't remember where I saw it, and it said, um, I don't know if it's a quote, I don't know if someone just said it, said, um, someone who speaks the truth has very little friends. Then so be it, you know, look. Is there an element of truth in that? I don't know. I don't know, there might be, I don't know. I don't know, Coogan, to be honest. I have no idea. It may be not flavoured a month, then a lot of people ain't gonna like. Look, if you're saying things to gain favour with people, then, you know, what are you anyway? You're just a false cunt, aren't you? That's right, isn't it? That's why there ain't many people you know, mayors is never full of people. I pick and choose or say, I'm civil to everybody, but, you know, people today, it's all smoke and mirrors. You hardly see very truthful people there. Or if somebody has a problem, like I said, they run for the hills. You know, it's, we are where we are, this is society today, so when my day's up, I'm probably just a, a, a loner or whatever, I don't know what you want to call it, but... When my time's up, I'll just go in my little box for my <laughs> The shovels are dead, will go on top, and that's the end of me, isn't it? So that's where we are. So it doesn't matter what I say and what I do, does it? I'm only going to say what I believe in, that's it. And I will say what I believe in, and I will do. So that's me, isn't it? Where, where would you say your fight spirit comes from? Where's that instilled from? Does it come from your dad? Well, you are your mother and father, aren't you? So. Yeah. I said, must do. Both. My mother and father. I'd like my mother and father, so that's it. I'm proud to be their son. I'm proud of my mother and father, so it must be that. Because I'm assuming it's a combination of them, but also the way you've brought yourself up as well and the way you bring your kids up as well. Listen, young people do stuff wrong, don't they? Some people get in the spotlight, some things do, people do a lot more dangerous things than others. But look, that's what prisons are there for, that's what the police are there for. You step out of line, you get in trouble, you get your time, and that's it. I've got no regrets, I don't hate anybody, I'm not against any law enforcement, it's needed, you know, so I've done bad things, paid the price for it. So I've got no ill feeling towards anything or anybody. That's it, if we, we take a path, and don't cry when you take the path, that's it. What did he say? Do the crime, be prepared to do the time. So, well, don't, don't do the crime if you don't want to do the time. I think that's the one of that. Oh, well, it's one of them. It could mean the same thing. But, <laughs> it know, does it, mean the same it, thing for it. It is what yeah. it is. But I'm not prepared to do any more crime. I'm not. Don't want to know. I'm not interested in prison. I'm not interested in anything. It's a waste of life. So I'm not interested in any of it. You move on with your life, don't you? There's other things more important. You you. Fight for your family and your, your kids, your, your wife, etc. Who fights for you? Who's in your corner? Who, who's there? 
Well, my, my wife, I believe all my kids are there for me, you know, so... And uh, I've got a few. I'm lucky. I've got a very few close friends around me. And that's it. Do you need any more? They're there for me, and I'm there for them. And people that you don't see on the camera are there for me more than... There is people around me, of course there is. Close people that I love and respect as well. So, and they're, they're the same for me, so that's what... That's why I get up every morning. A few people I've, I've asked that same question to, I'd say two or three people, have referred back to themselves and said, you can only really rely on yourself in life. Is there an element of truth to that? I think there is. Well, there is, because if you can't help yourself, others, how do you expect others to help you? So you have to do it, don't you? So I think um, that's, that's true. You've got to help yourself. But I, um, how do you say? I think, you know, the best wealth you can have is health and peace of mind. If you got that, you're the wealthiest man on the planet. Yeah, because I agree it, with that. You know, because when you look at everything else, forget everything else. Forget looking at the neighbour, forget looking at everybody. If you've got peace of mind and you're healthy, then you're extremely wealthy. Because wealthy is... Any man can ever be, or woman, child. Yeah, I think peace of mind is something that's very underrated in life. It is. You can have the world, and if you ain't got peace of mind, you've got nothing. It's very true. It's not spoken about enough, but that's like something possibly we take for granted. It is. When things are going okay in your life, or you haven't got problems, but you're right. Listen, I've seen a lot and gone through a lot in my time, so I think uh, what what what's... What's, what's peace of mind for me? Uh, probably total retirement and listening to birds in the trees. And the odd clock here and there. And the odd clock, yeah, listening tick, 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 tick. Taking a few days away, hours, <laughs> days, weeks, months, whatever. So I can, uh, I can reason with uh, silence. I reason with that. Do you, do you believe that Let's just use boxing as an example here. Has the boxing industry caused any space of depression in your life? Um, Being in it. It has caused me a lot of the depressions and, and uh, you know, and although people think boxing has been good to me and, you know, boxing is, uh, you know, I'm a, I could, people see me as a main player in it. Me personally, boxing's not been good to me, no. I don't want to go into it, but it, um, you know, there's, a lot to be, there's a lot to be said about boxing, which I'm not happy with. But look, ultimately, it is a, I do it, it's a passion, you know. I love boxing and um, I like to see the fights. Uh, what fighters has got to say, though, and what fighters say about each other is like, I can't even remember what they said. It's, it's all shit to me. I'm not interested in what they say, to be honest with you. That don't register with me at all. Words mean absolutely minus 20, nothing. Doesn't even register on my scale. I go to these press conferences and I, and I listen and stuff like that, but it's, I'm just there for the press conference. But what, what, what boxers have to say means nothing. I'm interested in action, what they do in the ring. So the rest of all the all the pompous stuff and, you know, I, need to, I know they need to sell a fight or something, but I don't see any of that. I see all the hard work that needs to be done in the gym. But, yeah, I think you make a point there, though. It ultimately is a selling sport, and I suppose these press conferences and interviews and things that... Oh, it's needed because, yeah. obviously, I, I'm in boxing, but for the fans there, not, and the most, most exposure they can get is a good thing. It's good for the fighters to talk. It's good for all of it. I'm not condemning it. I'm just saying to you, as me looking at it, it doesn't hold any interest there. Is that the way you've instilled things into Huey? Or is that how Huey is anyway? I don't know. Hey, listen, he's, uh, he, he's his own man. He just goes in the gym and he wants to fight. So he's, um, he's, got, he's got his head screwed on. He's, he's, he's a nice fella. You know, and he, does his, he does his work and that's it. He's a, he, lives a private, he lives a private life as well. How old are you? 50? 55, Google. 
55. Mm. So, this next question. If 55-year-old Peter Fury could go back in time and give advice to a 25-year-old Peter Fury, what would he say? Um, well, what did we, I've always referred to what my old man used to say. He used to say, you can't put a, um, what is it? A young head on old shoulders or something, or old head on young shoulders, or maybe the latter. And he used to say things like that. And it's probably right. But I think looking back, you know, appreciate what you've got. Appreciate your family. Stop looking to be too big. Because you open your eyes too wide, you become greedy. And you become greedy for material things. And it's all irrelevant. It's all irrelevant. You know, what do you, what do you want a nice car for? To be clever. You know, say, look at me or whatever. And I, and I think you, when you're young, it's nice to have good things. It's hard for me to explain it. But I think looking back is keep your feet on the ground, uh, be real with people, keep out of trouble, that's the main thing. And um, because keeping out, of trouble, keeping out of trouble does what? It gives you less heartache, more time with your family and um, bringing your kids up to the right things. So I think uh, that would be the main thing looking back. How much different is a 55-year-old Peter Fury to a 25-year-old Peter Fury? I think there's a world of difference today. <laughs> I think there is, yeah. Because I'm not a young man anymore. I was a young man then and now I'm not. So there's a big difference. What about in your mindset? My mindset sees a lot of things. I'm a very... Uh, I study a lot of stuff. I study a lot of stuff. And people may think, you know, they're more... They know more than me or whatever, and they probably do, but it doesn't really matter to me what what it is. I think um, explaining your question, it is what it is, isn't it? You change, you change, your outlook changes, and everything else, and you've got a more realisation of how the world works as you get older. What, what What's similar between you at that age and you're at this age, what things are, are the same, have always kept the same in the way you are? Uh, I always prefer, I've always been prepared for the worst scenario in anything in life. So nothing would shock me. I'm not really shockable. You know, if anything downturn tomorrow, then it could downturn. So I always look, I'm not really, uh, I can always see the worst scenario. And I've always been of the mindset. If the very worst scenario hit, would I be able to deal with it? Probably, yes. No matter what it was. I've always had that mindset. So that's what you would have thought in, in your 20s to, to now? So that part of your life's always been the same? Well, in my 20s, I didn't know any bounds. You know, so... I wouldn't even be respecting the law in my 20s. I wouldn't respect anything in my 20s. I respect... Uh, I'd respect when people was right with me, and I wouldn't respect them if they wasn't. So it was pretty black and white back then. There was no really much understanding going on. So basically, I've always been all right with people, but back then it was a different scenario. I could turn any way on the spare of minute back then. What still drives that fight within you at your age now? Is there any fight left, Coogan? I don't know. <laughs> there must what? be something. What, what still drives it for you, though? When you wake up in the morning, what still... I think, um, you know, is uh, making sure the people around me do well. That's what I'm more interested in. But look, if they said to me, if my fighter said to me tomorrow, Peter, we've had enough of retiring, I'd retire myself. I've got no, I've got no ambition to be... Personally, I've got no ambition to personally achieve anything out of boxing. That's the way, I'll, that's the way it is. My ambitions in boxing is to make me fighters achieve their full potential. That's it. I, I've heard you talk about this before, and it's probably one of the reasons, obviously, or they, the reason why you don't take fighters on at, at will. I mean, Savannah, your boy Huey... And then outside of that, you don't take fighters on, do you? I mean, you could probably train whoever you wanted. I don't know, to be honest with you, but I think the thing is, uh, fighters has ended up with me by accident. You know, because I've got to know them and I like them and they're in the gym and they've stayed in the gym. Mm. But that's it. 
I don't take any fighters on because it's um, I've got to look at my time as well. You know, so there's only so much you can do. So I'd rather concentrate on the fighters I've got, and um, and that's it. You know, I'm I'm happy with the fighters I've got. Like I say, boxing ain't a business for me. It's not my business. You know, I know what goes on in boxing, and I'm I'm at the back of boxing, and I do look at the business side of it, obviously. Um, but I leave it to other people to get on with the business side of it. I'll just I'll just review it, and uh, that's it. Other people make them decisions, and I'm I'm happy with that. Don't get involved in it. Best way to be. Yeah, listen. As long as the fighter's not getting robbed, I'm happy. Okay. Well, listen, Peter. Um, appreciate your time. Um, like I said, this with yourself, obviously, we talk about a lot of stuff and normally when we are talking apart from the last interview we did actually which was went a little bit um away from what we normally talk about but um it is normally talking to you about the same things um this fight that fight who's going to win this fight which is good to debate every now and again but yeah, yeah. yeah it is you still think you'll be in it in five years who knows you know, tomorrow's not promised to us, is it? So, but listen, uh, we're going to get there, get what we're doing, what we're doing, and uh, pray to the blessed Lord. Uh, things, things work out, so you can only put your best foot forward. Uh, work hard, be determined, open your eyes, and uh, correct, um, correct things that go wrong, and uh, go again. That's life, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, if people were wondering what the sound was, that's Peter's dog. That's pretty quiet. <laughs> Peter, I appreciate your time as always. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely catch up with you again soon. Thank you very much for listening. Make sure you comment, like and subscribe and we will see you next week. because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We need their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day,